Shalom, everyone. Um, I come to you today in obedience to the Father. Um, though I have previously, I've recorded a video about two years ago. I haven't always been obedient in sharing visions and dreams given to me by the Father. So in obedience, I am here today to share something that was given unto me. But before we start, let's go ahead and say a prayer. Heavenly Father, Haya, I humble myself before you. Father, I ask that Holy Spirit intervene in this message that you have given me and that I may reach the hearts and ears of your children and that through this message that they take heed, Father, and repent from all unrighteousness and return and turn to the Lord. All this we ask for in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, our Yeshua HaMashiach. Amen. Okay, so the stream that was given unto me, before I start, I'm going to quickly just explain to you how it was given to me. So, I have been disobedient, and the Holy Spirit pressed it heavily upon my heart in regards to sharing visions and dreams that are given to me and how important it is. Because there was many that were given to me that have come to pass, and I did not share them. Though I shared them with people around me, but I should have posted them on YouTube in obedience to the Father. So I would like to share with you something that was given unto me back in 2015 when I was crying out to Abba Father. Holy Spirit gave me 1 Timothy chapter 4, 12 through 16. Bear with me because I'm new, so I'm going to be looking down reading from Scripture. Um, so have patience. 1 Timothy chapter 4, verses 12 to 16. Let no man despise thy youth, but be thou an example of the believers in the word, in conversation, in charity, and in spirit, and in faith, and in purity. Till I come, give attendance to the reading of exhortation, to doctrine, neglect not the gift that is in thee, which was given unto thee by prophecy, with the laying of the hands of the presbytery. Meditate upon these things, give thyself wholly to them, that they profiting may he appear to all. Take heed unto thyself and unto the doctrine. Continue in them, for in doing this thou shalt both save thyself and them that hear, that hear thee. So, okay. So I'm going to share with you guys my dream given unto me, September the 27th. And then I'm going to share with you a few scriptures um, in regards to what I believe that message was interpreting. I'm not an interpreter of dreams, but um, I do believe that the Most High is calling for His people to repent and return back to Him. So I will share a few verses, Bible verses, in regards to repentance. So here we go. September 27, 2021, at 5.30 a.m., I was given a dream and it was time stamped once I posted it at 5.44 a.m. I'm giving you the numbers of the time because it's very important. The Most High also speaks to his people through numbers and we reference it to the, to the strong coordinates uh, dictionary. So I will go ahead and after my dream, I will explain to you what the time stamps and the meaning of those numbers. I had a dream of people dead under water. There was death everywhere. My eyes were focused on this lady who was dead floating under water. I was shown her necklace that said, Jesus Christ, my savior. I had the understanding in my dream that she was a Christian whom was believe, who believed in Jesus Christ, but still continued in her sins with an unrepented heart. I was told in my dream that Jesus Christ hates the once saved, always saved doctrine. And I remember hearing loud and clear the word fidelity. So here's the meaning of the timestamps of that dream that was given to me at 5.30 in the morning. 5.30 in strong coronance means firmness, steadfastness, and fidelity, which was the word I heard in my dream. Fidelity. 
The timestamp of 544 in strong coordinates means faithfulness. And here's the meaning of fidelity for those who do not know what the meaning is. It means faithfulness to a person, cause, belief, continue in loyalty and support. And my loyalty is to Father Haya. And in obedience, I am, I am sharing a dream that was given unto me after I, with a repentant heart, plead to the Father for forgiveness and not being obedient. And immediately, by his mercy and his grace, has given me the opportunity to reconcile myself unto him. And he gave me a dream. And I am commanded to share this. So take heed to the warning. And in all things, please take it to prayer to the Most High for your confirmation and on it. And study, study, study. I'm going to share with you a few uh, verses in regards to repentance. And I'm going to start with Matthew chapter 4, verse 17. From the time that Jesus began to preach and to say, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Matthew chapter 7, 19, verses, I'm sorry, Matthew chapter 7, verses 19, 19 to 21. Every tree that bringeth not forth good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire. Wherefore, by their fruits ye shall know them. Not every one that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. Matthew chapter 8, verse 13. But go ye and learn what that meaneth. I will have mercy and not sacrifice, for I am not to come to call. I have not come to call the righteous, but the sinners to repentance. Matthew chapter 24, verses 12 to 14. And because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. But he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations, and then shall the end come. Luke chapter 13, verse 3. I tell you, nay, but except, except ye repent, ye shall all likewise perish. John 5, chapter 14. This is when Jesus heals a man on the Sabbath day. And this is what it says. Afterward, Jesus finds him in the temple and said unto him, Behold, thou art made whole. Sin no more, lest a worse thing come unto thee. John chapter 8, 10 to 11. When Jesus had lifted up himself and saw none, but the woman, he said unto her, Woman, where are those thine accusers? Hath no man condemned thee? She said, No man, Lord. And Jesus said unto her, Neither do I condemn thee, but go and sin no more. John chapter 15, verse 4 through 6. Abide in me, and I in you, as a branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide in the vine. No more can ye except ye abide in me. I am the vine, ye are the branches. He that abideth in me, and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me ye cannot do anything. If a man abide not in me, he is cast forth as a branch and is withered, and men gather them, and cast them into the fire, and they are burned. Acts chapter 17, 30 to 31. And in the times of this ignorance, God winked at, but now condemneth all men everywhere to repent, 
because he hath appointed a day in which ye, he will judge the world in righteousness by that man whom he hath ordained. Wherefore he hath given assurance unto all men in that he hath raised him from the dead. Then we have here chapter um, James chapter 4. 6 through 8. But he giveth no more grace, wherefore he saith, God resisteth the proud, but giveth grace unto the humble. Submit yourselves therefore to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Draw nigh to God, and he will draw nigh to you. Cleanse your hands, ye sinners, purify your hearts, ye double minded. I'm going to share with you all two more verses. Bear with me. 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 1. Now the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. Here we go. Last verse. Revelation chapter 2. Verses 4 through 6 and verse 15. Nevertheless, I have somewhat against thee, because thou hast left thy first love. Remember, therefore, from hence thou art fallen. Repent and do the first works, or else I will come unto thee quickly and will remove thy candlestick out of his place, except thou repent. But this thou hast, that thou hatest the deeds of the Nicolaitans, which I also hate. So hast thou also them that hold the doctrine of the Nicolaitans, which thing I hate. Repent, or else I will come unto thee quickly, and will fight against them with the sword of my mouth. Okay, guys, so the Lord expressly tells us that he hates the doctrine of the Nicolaitans. Hates is a very strong word. And I'm going to share with y'all what the Nicolaitans doctrine is. And I got this off of, um, give me a moment. Um, pardon me. <laughs> I'm not too savvy with technology, so... Here we go. I got this off the Theopedia, um, the Theopedia Encyclopedia of Biblical Christianity. And this is what the it says in regards to the um, doctrine of Nicolaitans. Oh no, it, <laughs> forgive me, it just clicked right out of there. The doctrine of the Nicolaitan appears to have been a form of antinomianism. Forgive me if I didn't say that word right. Antinomianism, which makes a fatal mistake that men can freely partake in sins because the law of God is no longer binding. It held the truth on the gracious reckoning of righteousness. But supposed that a mere intellectual belief in this truth had a saving power. So it's a doctrine abusing the grace of God. Brothers and sisters, please take heed to this warning. I pray that this message blesses you all. May the Lord, may the peace of the Lord be with you all. Amen.